Hey everybody, it's Jillian. Good morning. Happy Monday. Um, oh my gosh, it's Monday. Can you believe it? I hear my dog. Hold on. Come on, Sarah. Let's go. I tried to get her to come in earlier before I started this, but she has her own mind, so I know as soon as she hears me speak, she starts trying to come in. Come on, sure. Anyways, so yesterday I was learning so much stuff. Like, I actually studied a lot of the DNA double helix acids, the DNA and the RNA, and it's interesting because a couple months back, I read about it, but it just never really, you know, resonated or it just, I didn't feel the need to memorize the different, like, I didn't really know why I would want to know everything about the DNA, but then now I find some relevancy, okay? <clears throat> because we have so many people out there that are so malnourished and yeah, they're losing collagen, they're losing their DNA strength. Well, what is DNA strength? Well, first, everything is broken down to acids, like image. Okay, image is matter, gases, electrical impulses, acids, and DNA is an acid, and it's from the stars, from the viruses that are also made up of DNA and RNA, genetic material. And they are made up of in base pairs, which I didn't even realize. I mean, I did and I didn't. I never studied genetics, you know, in, in college or even in compulsory school. So it's like adenine and thymine are two base pairs, and there's two hydrogen bombs that, that bond them, and then there is the guanine and the cytosine, and they have to be three hydrogen bombs. So it's a two base pair with three hydrogen bombs. So you have three hydrogen bonds, B-O-N-D-S, so you have like a GCC, and then you have an AT, and then they're all strung up, and then the RNA is the repeating, and based upon the blueprint, like a 3D printer. And then also purines and pyrimidines. And purines and pyrimidines. Purines is, is uh, the A, what is it? The adenine and the guanine. And the pyrimidines are the thymine, the uracil, and the cytosine. Okay? And so uracil comes from taking away an amino group from the cytosine. So that way you can have um, an evolution in your RNA. And that's only found in your RNA is the uracil. Okay? So these are things I didn't even know really at all. Like I knew about the A, the Gattaca. Like you watch the movie Gattaca. And it was like a great movie, like Hollywood. And so I knew DNA double helix from that point of view. And then how they were trying to find the best perfect specimen with a perfect uh, DNA structure with no anomalies to it. And so, but that's all the thing I really knew about, you know, the, the DNA. So yesterday I really made sure I learned it. But why did I want to learn it? Like, what's the point? Like, why do people learn things unless there's a reason behind it? That's why I never understood school. Because how do you know to learn this stuff unless there's a reason to learn it? And it's almost like you have to be in your environment. You have to actually have intellectual adaptation. You go into your environment, you see everything, and you're like, okay, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do that. But when you're in like 19 or 18 and you haven't really seen the world and all you see is whatever your tiny narrow field, and you're like, I don't want to do what my parents are doing. I don't want to do what this is, you know. What the hell do I want to do? So so I learned the the whole DNA double helix and the pyramiding and the and the purines and all of that and learned all their different components and then and then connected them with the binary code because i i dated someone a long time ago that went that was a postdoc at ucsf who was talking about his work of protein docking molecular biology and i'm like oh protein docking molecular biology okay and then I, then and then I'm learning about binary code and binary code is a lot of is is what they use in computer programming and I'm like okay where's that connection between the binary code and computer modeling and doing the if then and then the proteins and then how is this biotech 
you know, sell the proteins to, to different um, labs or to different schools or to different places. So then for them to do experiments on animals or, <clears throat> or somebody does a computer model of specific projects and then they sell that program or they sell that report or they sell that protein. And so there's definitely obviously a commodification with um, gen genetics. But then I, you know, so I realized a binary code is like, was it one DNA byte is like eight positions, eight bits. So you can have four base pairs in one DNA byte. And that is, you know, one, the one, um, bun, one binary code is like one DNA byte, which is four base pairs or eight positions. Okay. And that is the, the four base pairs could be A, T. G C C A T G C C. So, you know, that type of thing. And then when there, when there are anomalies and they're actually in RNA was where the uracil comes in. Cause uracil, see, I'm not, I'm not sure where uracil came into being because I see how they characterize uracil, which is a, an extraction, a derivation from cytosine. It's taken away an amino group and having its own supported structure to then allow adaptive immunity, to allow mutations, to allow evolution. And it provides a relatively stable environment for that to happen. It's not resistant to the atmosphere because you don't want too much resistance to the atmosphere either because you want to be able to fluctuate with the atmosphere. So this is probably why, this is probably why when people do get exposed to new viruses, the uracil, which allows the mutations to happen, then um, people feel the symptoms and antibodies are then formed against that uracil, which is then leads to autoimmune disorders. But for you to be able to evolve, <clears throat> those autoimmune disorders can be reversed and finally smoothed out and the body can adapt to the new environment. So there is a way to adapt to uracils and adapt to the changes to the environment without suffering from chronic illness, okay, chronic disease. And so I think uracil is definitely the, uh, the foundation to chronic conditions because people get stuck in a loop, like a broken record, okay? And so then if you put in like the J-juice, you add in the food supply, you heal and seal, you have a high mixture of elements and salts and diverse um, nutrients and then you also have purines and pyrimidines and you know if anyone that you know gets gout because of so much purine it's because they're not distributing those acids correctly and they're accumulating and so and so then this whole thing with the binary code is then when they're doing the computer modeling then they're doing if then types of um questions and programs and procedures and types of stuff and so so in my section i do talk about yes the link between electronics which is high voltage low voltage frequency um on and off right turning genes on turning genes off and then using specific acids that have higher form of electrons or they bind with a specific purpose Okay, so when you have, when you're inducing um, energy into your immune system, it then energizes the T cells, the agonist and the antagonist cells to bind to ligands and then send the messages into your DNA to then start doing either attacking things that have an algorithm more frequency or pro promoting growth. And so, so that's what the whole binary code is, is merging with electronics. So then the whole what is the trinity of infrastructure is the CPU, the central processing unit, and it's electronics and biology. And they're all three connected, but it's the central processing unit is what determines the then the algorithms and the image that's being projected, of which is why we're seeing so much experimentation. And yes, the therapeutics are a type of experimentation, but I mean, when you're evolving, there's always going to be experiments. Evolution, every evolution is always going to be practicing because we don't know until you actually try something out. Okay, but so as long as it's, you know, that people are warned, okay, here's the Freedom of Information Act, here's the inserts, 
if your body isn't built up to the level of the environment, you're going to feel a little, you know, evolution. Yes, you're going to feel the antibodies attacking your uracils. And then you will have to then, you know, flush them out, those excess antibodies out, build your body with the purines and the pyrimidines and the, and the vegetables and the soy and the meat and whatever nutrients, the bioengineered food, build your DNA, okay, and then evolve. Now, are you going to grow wings? Well, I doubt it. Um, I doubt it because the prototype came from the caveman who came from, well, you could say the apes, you could say the aliens. I don't care where you think the prototype came from, but the prototype was caveman, was a human, but it wasn't a very evolved a human. And so evolution then triggers innovation. And so you can see that, that the disparity of the intelligence in your world when you go to different regions. Now, I don't want to insult anybody, but different regions have specific um, genetic markers, yes, but also occupations and the food supply. And sometimes biotech will influence more of the certain genetics in some of the population to then carry out a specific duty and then try to influence other genetics in other regions to carry out another duty. And so then I'm going to write, I'm, I'm also writing about then the whole thing with the Human Genome Project. And then, <laughs> <coughs> hold on. <coughs> and then why it is that <coughs> the two coasts are um, very, very innovative. And then Middle America is very traditional, like super traditional, but they're so freaking strong. Middle America is so strong. I'm telling you. My husband is strong. He is an actual prototype of an actual middle American who is smart. Yes, not super innovative, but smart as hell. Like he could pick apart an engine and put it back together. He could fix things. He could, he does CB radio stuff. He knows how to learn all these electronic stuff. But why he's, is, why I don't think he's innovative because he doesn't understand the indefinite life. He can't grasp that. I wish he would. So I wish you would do my protocol, but the, it's the pain thing that people have an issue with. They might get it, but they don't want to deal with the pain thing. So if they get it, but they can't deal with the pain thing, then they don't want to hear about it because they don't feel they have access to it, which I understand that too. And so, um, so when you're built really strong on the outside, it's going to be very difficult to try to get your DNA to go the way it needs to go so it can survive and stay alive on a continuous basis. So I figured out that ge genetics are being manipulated based upon your geographical location. And then also too, you know, China, um, and China has biotech over there too, but people in Southern China were very slight. They ate more dim sum, they ate more steamed stuff. And then uh, people in Northern China ate like Panda Express, you know, more of the Manchurian food, the heavy sauces, the heavy meats, the heavy starches, which is great because when you're in northern China and snowing and it's a higher altitude, you need more food to pad you because of of the of the of the the location, the elevation. Okay. And so yes, we do eat foods based upon our geographical location, our culture, what we think is supporting our body. And when people think that they're stuck with the DNA they have, then they're gonna only eat in a very narrow way. And I've seen it in my own family. You know, you know, I've seen, I mean, we were deprived of certain things because they thought it was bad. All food is good. There is no bad food out there. The only thing that is cytotoxic is the fact that you're holding unbalanced energy. Hormones have been turned off and turned on and all cattywampus. You have several programmings conflicting with each other, which is why you see issues with people transitioning from the old atmosphere into now the new COVID atmosphere because they have old programming, which is what cures are, which is what the vaccines are. They're a specific programming that is supposed to, to be uniform. And that's why they want everyone therapeutized. Everyone's on the same page, but that's impossible because there's always going to be somebody out there that's going to travel that has different aberrant information that's then going to infuse that. Now you could have one person infuse that aberrant information, but you have 10 people. That's why you can't have too many anomalies in your RNA. When you have too many anomalies in your RNA, now I'm gonna switch to RNA and DNA. When you have too many anomalies in your RNA, then it becomes unstable. That's why you can only have them be less than 200, you know, um, combinations that are not like the, the usual combination or, less, or something like that. There's a number, but you have a limitation of of aberrant um, code in your RNA. 
So that's the same thing out there. You have 7 billion people and you're trying to get 300 million all on the same page and everyone's freaking flying around and traveling. There's no freaking way. So that's what the issue is. And that's why there's so much division, literally at the micro level and the macro level in our societies, because so many different programs are conflicting with each other. Okay, you're, I'm walking into one microbiome and they have another set of program that I have to now evolve to and vice versa. Maybe I'm introducing another program into their environment that they have to go involved to. And so it becomes this back and forth and everyone wants to blame each other, which, you know, I, I don't fault you because where do you lay the blame? <laughs> there's no way to get 7 billion people all on the same biochemical programming. And so there's going to be conflict. But here's the thing. Do you have... This is the trinity of balance. Do you have the strength? Do you have insulation? Do you have the energy to be able to handle different microbiomes, different evolution, different DNA, different everything? And if you don't, then you're going to suffer heart attacks and then die from them. You're going to suffer vital organ failure. You're going to suffer a lot of stuff. Oh, I'm sipping. Let's see. Had to my all right. 